You can tell when a company is all in on a new product, when even the inside of the box has been monogrammed. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and this is the all-new Fractal Design Define 7. This is the continuance of their R series, the R4, R5, R6, and now just the 7. They're dropping the R from the name as the R stood for revision, and, well, revision is now implied. If, like me, you've been a longtime fan of the Define R series, you are going to love this case, as pretty much every single thing has been improved in some meaningful way. Starting with the side panel. Now the Define R6 introduced what I like to call the click lock system of installing the side panel. And the Define 7 takes it one step further, and that is pretty much the only thing that holds the side panel in place. They've removed the two rear thumb screws from the case. Even with just those top three friction mounts, I would feel more than secure transporting this case around. However, if you do want to keep people out of your system or want just that little bit of extra security, there is a single screw you can install right here behind the front panel to lock the side panel in place. To remove the panel, just push on this little tab right here, and off it comes. Like every fractal case I've reviewed before this, the Define 7 is solid as a rock and definitely made to last. Also, in the unboxing experience, there's a couple extra touches that I really appreciated, such as the inclusion of individual baggies for all the different types of screws to put this thing together. And they weren't just zip-tied in one of the hard drive cages, there's actually a separate box that you open with all the accessories inside of the box. A uh, very nice touch, not having to dig things out from the inside of the case. I just realized I forgot to turn this thing on before I started filming. There we go. Not that there are very many lights inside of here, but I figured you might want to see them. Moving on to the internals of this case, and this is where this one's going to be very familiar for any fans of the Define series. The Define 7 does come with three of Fractal Design's 140mm fans pre-installed, and as has become customary with a lot of the recent cases, also comes with a 7-port fan hub. However, this one is pretty baller. It's a 100% custom PCB that sat right up here along the top of the backside of the case, keeping your cables nice and tidy and very easy to manage. Like the Define R6, the Define 7 does include vertical GPU mounting support for a two-slot graphics card. However, you will have to buy the Fractal Design riser cable if you'd like to utilize that. One of the biggest differences visually with the new Define 7 is actually Fractal's new design language. That started with the Vector RS and the introduction of their all-new logo, and you can see a lot of those design cues carried over into the Define 7. First off, you can see their new logo imprinted onto the side of the basement right here, and a lot of those new geometric shapes are carried over into a lot of the vents. So the top of the basement right here, the rear fan exhaust, they're instead of being direct straight vertical cuts, they're all a bunch of different geometric shapes, and it's a really sharp look that I really do appreciate. That vent design is carried over into one of the two top panels that you can select for your Define 7, but don't worry, you don't have to choose at purchase, both are included in the box. I've opted to go with the solid top panel as I'm going with just an airflow system with air in the front and then exhaust out the back. However, if you're going for a water cooling layout, you can replace this top panel with a vented top panel and mount a radiator or fans right here on top. And while we're on the subject of the top panel, I do want to give major props to whoever designed the machining for the front I.O. So the front I.O. does stay in the top of the case when you replace the panel, and as you can see, it is just cut out from the top right here. And when you slot it in, it fits perfectly, and that is not something that's easy to do. So uh, Fractal, major, major kudos for your construction quality, machining quality, and uh, just overall design there. Moving to the inside of the Define 7, we finally get to talk about what makes the Define series of cases so special, and that is definitely the internal modularity of them. Now right now I have my case in the default open chassis design, which is great for pretty much any workstation or high-end gaming build. In this configuration, you can fit up to four 3.5 inch hard drives and two 2.5 inch SSDs. Or you can go with a full custom liquid loop, installing up to a 420 millimeter rad on top, a 360 in the front, a 280 in the bottom, and up to a 140 mil in the rear. Also, using one of the universal brackets Fractal includes in the box, you can mount your pump and res combo right here on top of the basement, or swap that out for a hard drive mount if you so desire. But here is where this review gets a little interesting. If you are looking at building yourself a home storage server, this replaces the Define R6 as my recommended case for doing that. The reason being is the Define R6 only holds up to 8 hard drives, which gets most home users up and going. The new Fractal Design Define 7 will hold 13 three and a half inch drives in its storage configuration. And if you opt for the larger version of this case, the Define 7 XL, that case will hold 18 three and a half inch drives. Switching this over from the open configuration to the storage configuration is just as easy as it was on the Define R6. There's a couple of screws to remove for this rear panel and then it slides forward right here in front of the fans, dividing the case essentially in two. 
In the basement of this case is a hard drive cage that supports up to two three and a half inch drives. Fractal also includes four of these three and a half inch drive trays to use in the storage configuration of this case. You can also buy additional hard drive sleds and install up to nine of these sleds in the storage configuration mode, bringing your total rear capacity of this case up to 11 three and a half inch drives. Also, using those universal brackets I mentioned earlier, you can also install up to two three and a half inch drives up here above your CPU cooler, bringing your total capacity up to 13 three and a half inch drives. If you use all of the available three and a half inch drive bays in this case, you obviously won't have any space to install any water cooling or even an AIO. However, Fractal did include up to 185 millimeters of clearance for a large air cooler like the Deepcool Assassin 3 that I use here, or something like a Noctua NHD 15. So even with all of the available drive bays used, there's still plenty of cooling support inside the case. Now, obviously with the hundreds of different CPU cooling choices you could possibly make inside the Define 7, cooling is going to be a little bit more subjective and a your mileage may vary kind of thing. However, I was very impressed with the results I got in this. Using the Assassin 3 cooler on my 9900K, it stayed at about 78 degrees Celsius under a sustained Cinebench load. And for gaming performance, my GTX 1080 stayed right about 68C, and both those numbers are pretty much on par with what I would expect out of just about any system. And one last thing to mention before I wrap up this review, you can install an optical drive in the front of this case. So EPOS boxes of the world, rejoice. So there you have it, the all new Fractal Design Define 7. It's a case that improves on the legacy of the Define R6 in just about every single meaningful way. It's more expandable, it's more configurable, and it maintains that best in class quality construction and feature set the Define series is known for. But probably my favorite spec from the Define 7 is the price. If you want the solid side panel version, that one's just $159. If you want a tempered glass side panel like I have here, that one is just $169. And if you're interested in picking one of those up, go ahead and follow the links down in the video description. Huge thank you to Fractal Design for sending the Define 7 out for me to review. And standard boilerplate for all of my reviews, I am able to keep this model of the Define 7. However, Fractal Design did not pay me in any way, shape, or form. And they will not be seeing this video before it goes live on YouTube. As always, make sure to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you are interested in financially backing the channel, make sure to follow the link down to my Patreon to get exclusive access to my Discord server. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Ah, don't get that one. Beer for today is Shrouded Summit Belgian White Ale from Ghostfish Brewing Company in Seattle, Washington. Uh, if you don't recognize that name, they are known for producing 100% gluten-free beers. So this is a gluten-free Belgian White. It's a 4.5% and 20 IBU. That's a little bit cloudy. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's like this. I hope this beer's okay. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I like this one. It's like Blue Moon made a light beer. Wow. Now that it's settled, it's actually not quite so bad. Um, it's, it's finishing with this sour note though that I really do not enjoy. Whew, that is weird. That is just weird. <laughs> Boy, this just is not very good. I mean, I'm going to drink it because I opened it, but this is just not a good beer. Which is disappointing because I've had a number of Ghost Fish beers in the past, and they've all been pretty solid, especially their, uh, their Imperial Stout. Belgian White, though? No. Boy, it's sour up front. It's sour in the middle. It's sour and bitter in back. It's just not pleasant. <laughs>
What's funny is I let it sit for a while, I come back to it, I take a drink, and it's kind of pleasant. I kind of get kind of what they were going for. You taste a little bit of banana, but it's more like a, it's not like that ester and clove and banana. It's like this really weird soured banana and like a sour mash taste and almost like a little bit of vegetation on top of that, like, like bad coleslaw or something. Um, it's really, really bizarre. Like, I think I get what they were trying to go for. I think they just missed the mark entirely. And then, yeah, the second drink, all I get is like vegetation and sourness. Ugh. This is an interesting beer. Oh, and by the way, there's like this film on the bottom of my glass now that's kind of cascading down with the beer. Um, if I were to rate this on untapped, I'd probably give it a 1.75. I get what they were trying to do with this beer. Uh, it is certainly kind of a Belgian inspired, but it's like a Belgian inspired light ale. Um, I wouldn't call this a Belgian white. Um, you can kind of get some of those Belgian esters, but overall, I think it's just a miss.